Hi there, I'm David. In this video, I am going to show you how to make a naked Vista. How you can waterproof it, how you can glue your ribbon cable and UFL connector so it doesn't pop out in crashes or pop off, whatever. I am also gonna talk about the durability because a lot of you may be thinking you're gonna compromise its durability when decasing it. I've been flying it for months now on my crazy sub to 50 build and it's still going strong, but I'll get into that later. So first of all, I'm going to take out the Cadex Vista from the Gap RC Cinelock 25 I got right here, which just weighs a little bit too much in my opinion. I want to shed some more weight from the drone so I can fly longer, get a better flying experience. So first we're going to remove the screws that hold the bottom plate to the drone on your drone. This may be different. Then I'm going to just remove the UFL retainer so I can disconnect the antenna. Next time I'm going to desolder it just to make it a little bit more easy to work on. Now I've taken a picture of how the wires go in. You can always check the manual, but yeah, I think it's just easy if you can look at the picture and I'm going to start from right because I am right handed. That's one out. Okay, so that's that. The Vista is still connected by the ribbon cable going to the camera. I'm not going to remove the camera to do this. The Gap RC Cinelock frame is just too hard to work on. And, and yeah, I'm taking the camera out would just be too much of us. So we've desoldered the cables. Don't worry about, don't worry about all of this. We're gonna clean that up afterwards, but that's not an issue right now. All these screws you see around this Vista have got to come out. If you're wondering what tool I'm using, this is a Xiaomi Wow Stick. I've bought this a couple of months back and I can seriously tell you guys, I'm not going back to regular screwdrivers or tools anytime soon. This thing is just so much fun to work with. It makes your life a lot more easy everything just goes a lot faster especially when you're building a lot of drones or I'm, I'm working on my tiny whoops a lot and yes yeah, screwing in motors uh, always takes a while if you do it by hand and yeah this really speeds it up if you want to check this out i think i got it for about 30 euros on banggood with 64 bits yeah battery life's great power is great I can really recommend this thing. I'll try and put a link to it uh, in the description below if you're interested. After taking the screws out, it almost just falls apart. There is a ribbon cable connecting the two PCBs and you gotta be careful with this one because you do not wanna damage that. So let's just pop this side off. That's what it looks like. So you got two halves now. These, I'm gonna remove them. Okay, this one just comes off. I know there's some thermal paste underneath here somewhere, so pretty sure this is gonna be a site that has thermal paste on it because it's very, very sticky. There we go. That's the thermal paste that just transfers the heat to this, to the heat sink. Okay, we're gonna worry about that thermal paste later. Now, I'm going to remove the other half of the Vista from my drone. First, I'm going to remove the ribbon cable from the camera. This is also a retention piece. We're not going to use that anymore. So now we got access to this. Okay, we got it. Same thing. Now we just take these heat sinks off. Just be gentle. There's some more thermal paste underneath here. Take your time with this. Work your way around the board. Loosen it up a little bit. Okay, that's open. All right. So now we got thermal paste on both sides. Don't let any thermal paste get into these connectors. The next step, we want to remove the thermal paste. If thermal paste doesn't touch a heat sink, it will actually work as an insulator. So it will warm up your Vista even more. I'm just going to use a toothpick to scrape some off. Again, be careful not to get anything into connectors. 
I'm just going to try and get as much of it off as I can. So while I'm doing this, uh, let's just, I'm just going to talk about my experiences with uh, a Naked Fista. I've been flying one for a few months now. A few months back, I've posted my build, the Crazy Sub 250 build. It has a Naked Fista. 1507 motors. I fly it with an 850 uh, milliampere hour LiPo, which weighs 100 grams by itself. I've crashed that drone a number of times in wet grass. I've crashed it in a bando against wooden beams. I've crashed it against trees and my Vista still is going strong. I always fly it on 1000 milliwatts and I haven't had any heat issues so far. So for all of you out there that are actually scared to do it, because of durability issues. Well, I think you it's 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 a pretty safe mod. If you decase it the way I do and you protect it against moist and water from landing or crashing in wet grass and stuff like that, I think it's gonna just it's gonna last a long time. So yeah. These things actually last longer than all of my analog VTXs who broke well, all broke in a couple of months and I had Matex, I had tank rushes, I had um the 1000 milliwatt VTX from, from TBS, uh, the Unify, I think. I've flown all of those and I broke all of them in a few months or less. So the Vista is actually the most durable VTX I, I've ever, ever flown. It's uh, incredibly well made. Good, so I took off as much as I could with a uh, toothpick and some cut and swaps but I want to get all of it gone so I'm just gonna take some isopropyl alcohol and I'm gonna use a toothbrush. Let's start out with this one. I'm just gonna gently brush as much of it as I can off I'm not using a lot of force here. If you get some on the um, some of the isopropyl alcohol into the connectors, don't worry, it'll just evaporate. It doesn't matter. Just don't get any thermal paste in there. And you can see it getting cleaner. You could use a little bit of tape to cover these if you want to be extra careful. It's starting to look pretty good. Add a little bit more alcohol. Okay, awesome, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm going to do the other PCB off camera. That's a little bit more easy to do. And then we're going to waterproof it. My PCBs are clean, as you can see. Let's just zoom in here. You can get a better look at it. It took me a while, but yeah, you just have to go easy. I've already cleaned up the solder pads. Now it's easy to work on when everything is apart. So that's a good time to do it. Let's go on to the next step. And that's protecting it from moist and water. And yeah, when landing on wet grass or crashing in wet grass, I use nail polish to do this. A friend of mine uses uh, Plasti Dip. There's a lot of ways you can do this. I use nail polish, you can see through it. So if you ever need to solder to anything, you can actually find the pad you wanna solder to easily. And you can solder through it. It's also electronic safe. Anyways, shake before use. I'm just gonna apply this on all of the electronic components, except the solder pads, because I'm still gonna need to be soldering to them afterwards. And it's easier to solder when there's no nail polish on them yet. So I'm gonna wait doing these. And of course you cannot nail polish these or they will stop working. A thin layer is, is really all you need. You don't need to put a whole lot on there. Okay, that's one side done. Now the other side. So you get the idea, you just go around the entire board like that. Only the, uh, the electrical components, you do not have to waterproof the sides or anything like that. I'm just gonna keep doing this for a little while and when it's done I am going to come back to you. 
Okay, so both of the PCBs are nail polished. I'm just gonna give it a few minutes. I put my little fan on there so it can dry. And when it's dry, we are going to put it back together and back into our GAP RC Cinelog 25. And I'm gonna show you how much weight we actually lost by doing this. You know what? Let's weigh it first. Let's see how much weight we actually lost. I've already put the case back together again with all of the screws and the retainers. It's even got the thermal paste inside of it. The heatsink by itself for the case weighs, wow, that's 9.75 grams. That's quite a lot. And with the two PCBs and the ribbon cable, we got 17.8 grams roughly. So we're gonna take away the heatsink. And of course, I'm gonna need some spacers and a few rubber washers to mount it. So I'm gonna add those. That's a total weight of 8.6 grams. Okay, so let's mount it. In your case, it might be a little bit different because you're gonna mount your Vista directly to your frame. On the Synalog 25, this button plate comes off and you have to mount the Vista to that. I've already sorted out my direction. This is going to be how this is going to be put into the drone. So this is my bottom side. I'm gonna take that into account when putting it back together. So. That's our bottom plate. And as you can see, by adding those washers, I really got a lot of space for air to pass through there and to get some really good cooling. Now, this is the connector for the ribbon cable from the camera. So that's going to go have to go in next because afterwards it's going to be very difficult to be able to reach it. Make sure it's all the way down. It's seated correctly. Okay, that's nice. We got it. It's all the way down. To prevent these from popping out in a crash, I use antenna glue. I don't use hot glue because VTXs, they warm up. And if your hot glue warms up, yeah, you know. I'm being quite liberal with the antenna glue. It's also a good way to keep moisture out. I tend to use enough of it. Okay, that's good. It isn't pretty, but it's good. Now next we got our ribbon cable we need to install. You actually cannot put on the ribbon cable wrong because there's a male and a female side. The male side clicks into the bottom PCB and the female side clicks onto the top plate. And in between those two plates, we're gonna put some washers to keep the two plates away from each other and let enough air pass through so it can stay cool. And this is a bit of a tricky situation. You're trying to get that top ribbon cable connected. Okay, I got it. Make sure all of your cables are properly seated when doing this because you do not want to go back in there and take it apart again to uh, to adjust those. Okay, we're almost done here. KEPRC provided some nylon nuts to keep the Vista in place. So I'm going to use those. And I think I'm going to put another set on top of them just to make sure they can't come off. It doesn't have to be super tight. If it keeps the Vista in place, that's more than enough force. It doesn't need any more. Okay, so that's on. Now before I'm going to do anything else, I'm just going to test the Vista. If everything works, I'm going to add some antenna glue to these ribbon cables from the side, just like that. And that'll be enough to prevent them from popping off. Guys, I've got some great news. I just tested everything and it still works. So now we can apply some antenna glue to the ribbon cable connectors and the UFL connectors so they stay in place. And then I guess it's ready to be put back inside the drone and fly it. But while I do that, let's just take a look at the weight I started with and where we ended up. 
Now that's a pretty decent weight loss, isn't it? Okay, so now you know how to decase a Vista and waterproof it and everything. If you still have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, thumbs down then. And if you really liked it, subscribe and watch my future content. See you in the next one, guys. Take care. Bye.